Here's the big idea. Many of our most important problems could be solved if we had greater capacity to change our own behavior. I want to repeat that. Many of our most important problems could be solved if we had greater capacity to change our own behavior. And usually it's not a want for ideas, it's getting ourselves to do it, right? Now, I don't want to go into a lot of theory at this point, but this is based on the work of Albert Bandura. He's a psychologist from Stanford, the number one most cited psychologist of the last decade. And Albert Bandura says, <clears throat> when you're trying to determine if people will do something or not, the two questions are, do I want to, and am I able to do it? So you see two columns there, motivation and ability. Motivation, do I want to? What would you predict if he wanted to make those sales calls first thing every day? Okay, what would you predict if he wanted to, but was unable to? Didn't have the, the uh, phone numbers, or didn't know how to use the speed dial or the computer phone. Would he do it? What if he knew how to do it, but didn't want to, would he do it? What if he wanted to and was able to? Would it more likely happen? Now, what we've identified is there are at least three factors that affect motivation and ability. Personal, left to myself, with no influence from others, do I want to? Social, how does my interaction with others affect my motivation or affect my ability? And structural, how does my environment affect? Uh, what are the non-human factors like pay, benefits, bonuses, rewards, recognition, office structure, distance between teammates. Uh, how do those things affect motivation and ability? So source one, personal motivation, he just didn't want to do it, right? Source two is against him too. I lack skills. I don't know how to change the lethargic feeling I have when I sit down on my computer. Does he know how to work the computer? Does he know how to make the calls? What skill is he lacking? how to change those lethargic feelings that say, I just don't want to do it. Would that be a helpful skill in overcoming smoking, in dieting, in not yelling at someone at work when you're really mad at them? To be able to control the emotions, would that be a helpful skill set? He doesn't have them. Source three, others encourage it. It's fun to share a good chat with my colleagues. They encourage me not to make the calls just by showing up at my carol and say, hey, did you see the game yesterday? Well, isn't that cool? Right? Also find that others enable it. People knock on my door, send me uh, IMs as I'm uh, psyching myself in to get started. I get instant messages. I get uh, email, and it draws my attention. I do that instead. Source five, no incentive. When I make a big sale, I relax a while, feeling satisfied about my commission rather than eager to get on to the next sale. Source six, environment enables. There are five kinds of distractions that can intrude at any instant. Instant messaging, text, mobile, phone, email, and a million more are just one click away. I right? wonder if there's any urgent news that just hit CNN. Now keep in mind, you only have two choices with the six sources of influence. One is act on them, or two, be acted on by them. <laughs> you escape the willpower trap when you start seeing all six sources of influence. So how do you escape the willpower trap? Recognize there are six sources of influence influencing me right now. If I can see them, then I can start making decisions about them rather than letting them have their way with me. Is that right? Make sense? The second principle, be the scientist and the subject. 
be the scientist and the subject. That's kind of intriguing, isn't it? I kind of wonder what that means. Yes, what is that? Well, glad you asked. Let me explain. <clears throat> this is an actual email that went around our office. Hey, everyone. A set of keys was found in the downstairs refrigerator. If they're yours, come find Becky. Um, can you please tell us whoever it is that claims them so we can make fun of them? Thanks. <laughs> if you keep them in the freezer, they last longer. Just saying. <laughs> it's not me. I only keep my keys on the second and third floor refrigerators. <laughs> They are mine, Emily wrote. I put them on my leftovers so I won't forget to take them home with me at the end of the day. Now that's an interesting strategy. <laughs> it works. She keeps forgetting to take home her leftovers. Apparently that causes problems for others as well as herself. She knows herself. She knows herself. You know what she knows about herself? Is she's likely to forget to take home her leftovers. So she tricks herself doing a little something because she knows herself that will make sure she takes them home. What's that? Well, I can't drive home without keys. So I'll do what? I'll make myself go to the leftovers because that's where I'm going to leave my keys. Isn't that interesting? Do you do anything because you know yourself so well to trick yourself into doing what you want yourself to do? That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Dan Ariely told students they had to complete five papers for his graduate class or his undergraduate class. The first group could turn in papers any time before the end of semester. Second group could decide in advance when they would turn them in and then submit the schedule to him. Once they had decided, they'd be penalized if they're late. The third group would be given a set schedule by their teacher. Do you understand the options? Which would be the easiest? First, let me turn it in when it's convenient for me, right? Which would be the hardest? Let me turn it in when the teacher wants it. What did most students choose? Almost 80%. Over 75%, excuse me, chose to be in the second group, which could decide in advance when they turned in, but once they decided, they'd be penalized if they're late. Why not go the easier way? Give, give me a timetable, I'll work to it. And if you don't give me one, I'll come up with one myself. What do you know about yourself? I know I'm not good at keeping to doing things without a timetable. <laughs> I know I'm not good at doing things without a timetable. I saw an interview with Bob Dylan. Oh my heck, the musemeister. I love Bob Dylan. And here he was, he must have been 65. He looked 80, but I think he was only 65. <laughs> and this interviewer said, Bob, what does it take for you to write one of those wonderful songs? And he goes, a deadline from my publisher. <laughs> I said, what? He says, oh yeah, if I go down the beach with my guitar, he said, I sleep. But if I have a deadline, I sit in my office and I start writing a song. What did he know about himself? Yeah? What these students did is they knew about themselves. They knew if the teacher holds them accountable, they'll do it, source three. And if they have a schedule that's set and they get penalized if they don't follow it, then uh, they'll do it. And they like the flexibility of choosing their own schedule, but they liked it being set and the teacher holding them accountable to get them to do it. That's what they had learned about themselves. Isn't that interesting? It's a way of tricking themselves, isn't it? Yeah.